Hello there, wonderful people of God, people who are conscious of the fact that sometimes the efficiency of a response does not lie in its rapidity, but in its accuracy. Yes, that's why Proverbs 15, 28 makes it clear that the godly think through before speaking. Hallelujah. Warm welcome to your Gospel Encouragement Program, Meaningful Few Minutes with Mommy Reads, where we use biblical tidbits to encourage ourselves I miss daily discouragement. We heartily appreciate everyone who is making an effort to like, to comment, to share, and to subscribe. We pray that as you continue to do so, may God continue to do you good in Jesus' name. If you are yet to subscribe to this YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Please make an effort to subscribe and to share as the Lord leads you. May God richly bless you as you do so. My brother, my sister, if Christ is not your Lord and Savior of your life, quit living a life of sin. Give your life to Christ now that you still have the opportunity to do so. And if you once gave your life to Christ, but took it back for reasons beyond your control, now is the right time for you to give back that life to Christ before it becomes too late. And if Christ is actually Lord and Savior of your life, live a life that will attract others to Christ and not repel them from Christ. We pray for ways and directions to keep getting the gospel across so that that brother and that sister can come to the saving knowledge of Christ like yourself and myself. May God continue to equip and empower us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. By the special grace of God, we've been able to share several topics from slot 1 to slot 359. The last being the fact that we should keep our light shining. We should stay connected. We should stay rooted. We should stay hinged, socketed, switched to our light source, who is the person of Jesus. And we should not allow anything to dim our light. We should remember that light has a speed. And so that speed will attract opposition. We should know that light requires that we pay bills in the physical realm therefore even in the spiritual realm to stay connected to our light source there are bills to be paid there are sacrifices to be made we pray that god will help us to practice what we preach in jesus name amen today in slus 360 we have a topic responding rightly Yes, in other words, we are telling ourselves that it is imperative, it is important, it's advisable for us to give the right responses to different situations. And our main passage for today is Ecclesiastes chapter 5 from verse 2 to 3, in which we are told that let our words be few. Beloved in the Lord. It's not by many words that we will win the case. It's not by many words that we will get that message across. It's not by responding harshly that we will bring that person to the saving knowledge of Christ. And that is why this is also confirmed by other Bible verses such as James chapter 1 verse 19 to 20 in which we are told to be quick to listen but slow to speak. It's not in vain that God gave us two ears so that we should be able to hear promptly. But he gave us just one mouth so that we should be wary of what we say. We should think through before we respond. We should think through before we answer, before we react, before we do something regarding what has been done to us. It's also clear that that's why the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 19 that where words are bound, sin abounds. Beloved in the Lord, the more we speak, the higher the probability that we will land into sin consciously or unconsciously and so that is why we need to hold our tongues because the bible says that them that hold their tongues are wise the bible says that even when a fool is silent he is considered wise the bible says we should season our words with salt that response that you want to give that person if the same response was given to you how will you take it if the tides were to turn, the tables were to turn around and that same response were given to you, how will you react? And so today we are looking at some examples of people who responded rightly and also some examples of people who did not respond rightly so that we can learn and we can improve upon ourselves. The first category of people who respond rightly, in this first category, you have the likes of Hannah, you have the likes of Esther, and of course, the likes of Mary. You realize that in 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 12 to 18, Hannah is at Shiloh. She's at the temple. She's pouring out her heart to God. She's trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And 
by this time, Penina has been mocking her. Penina has been using her to have a field day. Hannah never responds for once. It tells you the kind of person that she is. How matured, how reasonable, how wise, how composed she is. This is not to mean that she doesn't feel pain. No, she does feel pain. But then you realize that Elkanah does not scold Penina. He does not tell Penina to stop mocking Hannah. Elkanah does not wait for Hannah. Though he loves Hannah, he is able to have children. So he goes ahead to have children with Penina, whom he doesn't love because the Bible says he loved Hannah. You realize that Hannah is able to wait. Hannah is able to keep it together despite the tantrums that Penina is throwing. And then in this particular instance, she is pouring out her heart to God. And then Eli, a servant of God, comes and mistakes her for a drunken woman. Eli is asking her why she will be drunk early in the morning at 9 a.m. This goes to tell, tell us that servants of God are not all-knowing. Servants of God are not flawless. Servants of God are not perfect. They are people who have their weaknesses. And that's why sometimes a servant of God can talk to us in a way that, you know, if care is not taken, we, if we respond in the same way, we might just land into trouble or we might become enemies or get into an uncomfortable situation with that servant of God. And so we should understand that even as a servant of God, even as a man of God, a woman of God, they are still human beings before being called by God. They are still people like you and I with weaknesses, with shortcomings, with flaws. And so Eli misjudges Hannah, mistakes her for a drunken woman, but her response is one of somebody who is matured, somebody who is reasonable, somebody who is responsible. Some of us, if it were you and I today, the answer that we will give prophet Eli will just destroy the miracle that God has packaged for us. That man of God, that woman of God, that brother and sister of God has said something to you. Instead of taking it to heart, instead of keeping it and nursing it for it to germinate and bear fruits and recruiting other people to hate or dislike or beef that man of God, it is time to let go. Let our response be one of maturity. Even in silence, let us not beef them. Let us do what Hannah did. Let us take the time sometimes to explain to these people. Hannah goes ahead to explain calmly. And eventually, this Eli, who is in error, makes a declaration. Hannah claims it, and eventually she gets her somewhere. Think for a second what would have happened if she responded badly. Maybe Eli would have cursed her, and God would have still honored it, because until further notice, he is still a servant of God. Beloved in the Lord, our responses can trigger a quick miracle, or can delay the miracle that God has already destined for us. Let us be matured in our responses. In as much as we feel pain, in as much as we could be afraid, we could, you know, have questions, as is the case with Esther. Esther does not use her mouth to condemn herself. In Esther chapter 4 verse 16, she tells the Jews to fast alongside her. And then she says, if she perishes, she perishes. But if she lives, she lives. She does not end at the level of perishing. She ends at the level of hope, saying that she knows that she will eventually live. Beloved in the Lord. That situation might be daring. That situation might be daunting. It might have tarried for a long time. But let our response, by virtue of what we see, by virtue of the things we think of, because as a man thinketh, so is he. By virtue of the people we interact with, the way we react to people and situations, let it be such that will cause us to gain favor in the sight of God. Mary, the mother of Jesus, in Luke 138, she gives her all. She surrenders. After asking her questions, she says, be it done to me according to thy will. She reminds Angel Gabriel that she is the Lord's handmaiden. Most of us need to remind God, not that God has forgotten, but we need to get to that place of total surrender. We need to get to that place where we are no longer doing a tug of war or a power tussle with God based on his will and our will. Let us surrender. Let us respond rightly so that we can obtain the miracle that God has destined for us at such a time like this. You realize that there are also people who respond badly. A case in point is Rebecca and Rachel. In Genesis chapter 27 verse 13, Rebecca has had an instruction from the Lord that the older will save the younger. God did not in any instance tell her that I will need your help to make the older save the younger. 
But Rebecca, out of misconception, out of misunderstanding, you know, she, she, she gets it twisted and she tries to assist God. And so when Jacob is calling her attention to the fact that, hey, this thing that you're telling me to do might attract a curse to me, what does Rebecca say? Let any curse that is heaped on you be on me. And eventually, they go ahead with their plan. Jacob succeeds to steal what is rightfully his. But then Rebecca has it hot in the hands of the wives of Esau, Judith and her co-wives. The Bible says they make life miserable. They make life uncomfortable for Rebecca. Had it been, Rebecca had responded rightly. Rebecca had said something different, something positive. Who knows? Maybe these ladies, though foreigners, would have treated her the way Ruth treated Naomi. The Rachel is another example of somebody who does not respond rightly. She's trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now, in Genesis chapter 30, verse 1, she tells her husband, Give me children or I die. Why would the thought of death come to Rachel's mind? It just tells you the kind of person that she is. You realize that, yes, a desperate man can cling to straw. A desperate man, desperate situations call for desperate measures. But the desperation should not push us into confessing negativity. The desperation should not cause us into self to get into self-condemnation. She says she will die. Why would she think about that kind of thing? And eventually, God blesses her with children. But at, as at the time that she's delivering the second child, Benjamin, she eventually dies. Maybe if she had responded rightly by not uttering negative declarations, she would have been alive to carry Benoni, as she named him, meaning son of my sorrow. She would have been alive to carry him, to be alive to carry Benjamin, because Jacob eventually changed his name. How do we respond to situations? People would seize us, people will mock us. But are we responding rightly? Or are we responding just like the people themselves? If we do what they are doing to us, then how are we different from them? Another case in point is the person of the young Samuel. His mother has taken him to the temple and left him there under the auspices of prophet Eli. That same Eli who misjudged him, who made a mistake. Now you realize that... <laughs> A time has come when God has called Samuel. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3 from verse 9 to 10, before now, Samuel does not know how to respond to the call. He thinks that it's prophet Eli who is calling him. And so he goes. And after he has done so two times, the third time Eli tells him, when next you hear the voice, say, speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. That's a sign of surrender. A sign of submission. A sign to say yes. We are only vessels in the hands of the potter. We are only clay in the hands of a potter. And it makes it easier for the Lord to use Samuel effectively. The same is the case with Apostle Paul. While he's still called Saul, in Acts chapter 9 verse 5, you realize that his zeal, his curiosity for new things is taking him to Damascus. But when he encounters Christ on the way to Damascus, when he sees the light and the voice calls him, he says, who are you, Lord? This is somebody who is aggressive, who is arrogant, who is a persecutor. He could have just said something else. He would have just made a sweeping statement, a careless comment. But because of his zeal and curiosity and also his wisdom, he respects the person who is calling him. He says, who are you, Lord? This is a sign of surrender. This is a sign to say, I might not know you. But I will not disrespect you because I don't know you. Many a times the Lord is seeking our attention in one way or the other. He's using his prophets, he's using his servants, his, his ministers to get to us, to get our attention. He's using his word to get our attention. But we are too busy. We are too independent. We are too carried away. We are too full of ourselves to come in submission, to come in surrender, just like Samuel and Saul are able to do in order to get the instruction, the roadmap that God has destined for them. It is time to surrender to God. No matter how high we have become, no matter how famous, no matter how popular we have become. And that brings us to the next character, the person of King Saul. King Saul responds wrongly because he has been carried away by his position, his reputation, his status, his class, his taste, and what people think about him. And that's why in First Samuel, 15 from verse 20 to 24 you realize that this man has gone for battle and God has given him victory and prophet Samuel has delayed in coming 
he takes upon himself to offer sacrifice. He is a king, not a prophet. There are duties that are pertinent or peculiar to a king and there are duties that are reserved for a prophet because he wants to keep his reputation. When he goes for battle, the instruction is to kill everything. He doesn't. He spares the things that look beautiful in his eyes. And when the prophet comes and asks him, instead of apologizing, instead of asking for mercy immediately, he begins to explain. He begins to justify like you and I sometimes justify. We give explanations. We give excuses. We blame people for our wrong responses. And eventually, someone makes him to understand that obedience is better than sacrifice. And rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. Instead of still asking for mercy, he's busy explaining that the people were living and so that's why he took upon himself to offer the sacrifice. God is not looking for somebody who is reputation conscious. God is looking for somebody who will respond rightly in obedience to the instructions that he has given even today. And that's how Saul eventually loses the kingdom. In favor of a David who will surrender and submit to God no matter the matter. We can also be servants of God, but then sometimes we miss it. Because if you look at the example of Zachariah and Sarah, the Bible says that just shall live by faith and not by sight. But in Luke chapter 1 verse 18, after the angel, angel Gabriel has told Zachariah that you will bear a son. Zachariah looks at the physical reality. He looks at his age. He looks at his biology, his chemistry and everything. And he says, hmm, this one is not probably going to happen. And because the angel does not want him to spread doubt, the angel makes him dumb. The angel makes him mute until the fulfillment of the promise. It is the same with Sarah. Sarah has looked at her physical reality. She has looked at the mistake of Hagar. She has looked at this. She has looked at that. And now in Genesis 18, <laughs> they are coming to tell her that she will bear a child. In Genesis 18, 12, she laughs. She's asking if <laughs> at her age, she will be able to bear children. Her response is not the right one. Zachariah's response is not the right one. This goes to tell us that sometimes even longevity in Christ's service, in kingdom service, does not exclude us from doubt, from worry, from anxiety, from fear, from being human beings. That is why it is important as children of God to always renew our minds with the word of God so that come what may, no matter the matter, we have the scriptures to lean on. We have the spiritual promises to depend on. No matter what the physical looks like, we will not be deterred by what we see, but we will be convinced and convicted by what we are expecting to see with regard to the promise that has come from the word of God. Need I add that our Lord and Savior Jesus responds rightly in every circumstance. He teaches us that there's a time to be quiet and there's a time to speak. He makes us to understand in Luke chapter 22 verse 42 that despite the fact that he has his own will as a human being at that time on earth, he surrenders his will to the will of the Father and says that let the will of the Father take precedence. Let the will of the Father take preeminence. This is the right way to respond to the situations and circumstances of life. Yes, we might go through challenges. We might go through storms. We might have issues. People might betray us. People might let us down. Reality might not be adding up. It might not make sense. But as children of God, we should learn to respond rightly. Because the right response is what will trigger the miracle. Is what will ease the pain of the waiting. Is what will ease the pain of when it looks like God has gone silent. The confidence that we have, that we are responding rightly. We are doing what God expects of us per time, per season, per place. Is what will give us hope. Is what will give us assurance. And is what will build our faith. You know it in the Lord. The right response sometimes comes after we have processed our thoughts. We have slept on it. And we have come to a conclusion because we know that God will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. And that explains why. If Christ is not your Lord and Savior of your life, just bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Wash me with the blood of the Lamb. Give me the power to live right and to hate sin. Behold, you'll be getting it right before it becomes too late. We pray for grace to respond rightly. No matter how challenging and how difficult the situation may be, that as we respond rightly, God will come through for us in his own way at the appointed time. Remember that the Bible is the road. Jesus is the code. 
Sin is the obstacle and heaven is the destination. Shalom, good people of God.